All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Wired Wednesday, where the only thing wired is the host. Uh, today with us, we have a couple of special guests. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about an ad blocking platform called R Data. Well, uh, two of the co-founders decided to uh, hop on the show with us today and talk about it a little bit further. So I'd like to welcome uh, Leslie Purchase and Iggy Fanlow. Say hi. Hello. Hey, guys. Good to be here. <laughs> good. So how are you today? We're good. I mean, it's finally sunny here in Northern California. We were uh, we were part of the uh, the twenty day flood for for most of uh, January and February. So it's good to get some sun. Well, I'd imagine uh, we're we're right now buried in snow and everything else. So. I'm surprised that you said it rained in California. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was there exactly. once. The I think over. I saw one cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite enough to overturn the drought yet, eh? <laughs> Uh, not quite there, but a lot of places it's getting there. Where are you guys located? We are in Pennsylvania, uh, right near Williamsport, if you're familiar with the Little League World Series. Yeah. I grew up in Pittsburgh, so. Um... Go Steelers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we'll let you guys uh, tell us all a little bit more about our data. Want to go ahead? Well, um, so my friend Iggy came up with this brilliant idea. Uh about a couple of years ago, and we we only started putting it together a little over a year ago. And that the, the basic premise is that all of us have value in our data and attention. And right now, we're just giving all of it away for free. You know, you ever had the experience of searching for something online, and then it kind of follows you around the internet? Mm-hmm. And that process is being monetized by the large data platforms to the tune of you know billions of dollars of profit. And we thought that since it, it's that profit is made on the value of all of our data, that we should have a way to participate in it in, to some extent. And this is actually already kind of happening. So the largest ad blockers like Adblock Plus and Adblock are getting paid hundreds of millions of dollars every year by these large data platforms like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Taboola, and about a few dozen others. Right, for their their acceptable ads program. That's right, that's right. And the problem is the users aren't getting any of that. The ad blockers are just keeping it. And our idea was to turn that model on its head and say, you know, I think it's right that those companies should have to pay, but that money should flow through to the end users. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the, that's the basic premise of our data is that we are an iOS app and a Chrome browser extension. That's an excellent ad blocker now. And once we get enough people to join and get some scale and we start getting money to allow ads through, then each of our users can decide to continue to block ads or unblock them and get paid for it. Right. Right. And um, I noticed that uh, you're listed as a benefit corporation. Uh, and I found that rather interesting. Uh, do you want to explain that uh, structure a little bit better? Sure. 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 I'll take that. Um, so a benefit corporation, I think the very high level way to look at it is sort of halfway between a regular C Corp and a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. So you, you don't, you, you aren't uh, not for profit. You are seeking to make a profit, but your number one goal, the number one mission is to serve the public and serve the public's interest and benefit. So that's what we do, both both from a legal protection standpoint, so that shareholders, either during or before that, can't sort of go after us. We're doing the quote-unquote right thing. But we also feel it's the best way to do business going forward uh, in the 21st century without being cliche, that doing the right thing for the public is actually going to help your brand and help your company succeed in the long term. Yeah. And I, I did notice, like I did, uh, you know, some of the research on your guys' website and everything like that. And I noticed that that's what is important to you guys as community. Uh, I saw that you can get uh, re- receive shares. Uh, you said you can even give your shares to charity if you want. You can do anything with them. Uh, is there anything you want to talk more about that, or what else you can do with your shares? Or yeah, yeah sure. So that that was that was an idea that is sort of important to us. We we understand, you know, living in Northern California, particularly there's. There's a lot of people around here that that really don't need any extra money. (laughs) (laughs) We wanted a way to for people to do something good with the shares as well. And um, a lot of people had said to us, "Well, you know, a a few extra dollars a couple every couple months won't really make a difference to me." But 
if I know that by seeing ads, I'm actually giving money to a cause that I care about, like Komen or Wounded Warrior or UNICEF or any kind of charity, much more likely to do it and actually feel good about myself. All right, um, so and you you see it now, like with uh, a lot of a lot of people are using their consumer buying power to kind of make political choices and mm-hmm. and charitable choices. So I think we're we're really trying to keep in that vein. So right now you can use um, we have a couple of charity referral codes. If you sign up using those referral codes, then the bonus shares that they get, you also get bonus shares, but they get bonus shares as well. Um, and then eventually we'll have an option to donate all of your shares to charity if you if you choose to. Okay, so later on down in the future, if I wanted to say donate to the Electronic Frontier Foundation, I could just donate my shares to them and they'll make all the money off the ads that I see. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, the EFF is a great organization, actually. Yeah, yeah I thought that was a really, really cool idea. I've never really uh, saw a site that, you know, just gets right into the charity. And I thought that was a really cool and I think it helps make you guys stick out a little bit than other, you know other companies and stuff like that. I thought that was really cool. That is an excellent point. Yeah, I didn't mention that on our uh, broadcast about it the other day about the option to do the uh, the charity work. So that's a fantastic uh, program you have going on with that. Um, I have a question for you, Leslie, actually. <laughs> uh, I, I was looking into, uh, you know, our team uh, on your website there, and I noticed you are actually a medical doctor. Yeah. Yeah, what? so actually I, I trained as a surgeon, Oh my goodness! Uh, and then, what what and then would possess I, I, you to go from from medicine to to ad blocking? I'm curious about that. Well, I'll be honest with you; it's it's not too much of a leap, as it turns out. All right. um, so, I left surgery to have a family, so I had three kids. And then, when I wanted to go back into the workforce, I wanted to do something that would have a benefit for society, right? Okay. And and one of the reasons that I was excited about this idea was that I saw how it could really benefit a lot of people. This was a way to touch, you know, millions of lives instead of hundreds of lives as a physician, um, particularly in the developing world. We are a global company, particularly in the developing world, a few hundred dollars a year could make a tremendous difference in people's lives. Like if you look at microfinance, like Grameen Bank and Kiva, a lot of those loans are for just a few dollars. So if we could find a way to to provide people with uh, a, an income for their data and attention, it could it could be very impactful. So that was really my draw to it. Well, um, that's a heck yeah, of a reason. Was, <laughs> when, we, when we looked at it in the beginning, we were looking at the numbers and we said, hey, Kiva and these microfinance folks are lending about on average $25 to $40, I believe it is, to about a million and a half people. And we're like, we could end up Sort of converting that forget into a loan, but into an annual grant mm-hmm. of that amount or greater to potentially a billion people, and so that that to me is super exciting and yeah, really that's really like cool. I said that's a life changing amount of money for ninety percent of the people on this planet. Yeah, so you're like sort of like an internet surgeon now. You, you help <laughs> you help everyone out basically. <laughs> that's really cool. I never thought of it that way. That was really cool. That's a that's an excellent reason for doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, everybody on the core team, you know, without without sounding cheesy, but we all actually are doing this because we really believe in it. We really think it's a it's a good idea. You know, we've we've been working for a year. None of us are taking an income from this. We are just really we're it's something we're very passionate about. We think it's a good idea, and we think it's a it's a broad reaching idea. So when you have something that you think could really have a big impact, it's it's easy to get excited about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that's why we brought it up a couple of weeks ago is I heard about it uh, and thought it was a fantastic idea. You know, a lot of the information that's put out there right now, it, you're the product is plain and simple what it is. And it's nice to be able to get something back from that. And the uh, the added ability to put it into charity is, is just a fantastic idea. Yeah. yeah, actually, that's the expression we use. Uh, data is the new oil and uh, and everybody has drilling rights. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> that should be on your T-shirts if you make it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's an excellent way to look at it. I mean, it really is a valuable commodity. And uh, it used to be more of a balanced playing field. You know, I get content in exchange for my data. But now it seems everybody's getting more and more data and I don't get anything back. 
Yeah, I think I think if you look at the numbers in the last twenty years, I've seen several charts along these lines. Uh, the maybe understanding the analogy and most highly valued companies in the world were industrial companies and a lot of them were oil companies hmm. like Exxon and Mobil and, and Chevron. And, uh, and now of the top five, three or four of them are effectively data companies, Google, Facebook, Amazon, et cetera. So it is, it, it's an expression, but it couldn't be more real in terms of dollars and cents that there's been this amazing data asset that I think the latest number I saw for last year was about 200 billion of value. And that value is being mined, quote unquote, or extracted by these data platforms. And like I said, we're, it's, it's our drilling rights. We, should, we, we deserve royalties on it. Oh, I agree wholeheartedly. But I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the technical aspects of, of what's going on. You know, um, I spoke with Leslie uh, through the email uh, a couple of times here and uh, you guys have uh, Firefox up on the chopping block next and then you're going to go uh, to Android from what I understand. Um, right now, I've been using our data and enjoying it thoroughly and uh, I can tell it's based on uh, uBlock Origin, which is a open source ad blocking thing. And uh, what, what are the plans with uh, how to implement our data on uh Firefox and Android? Because I imagine with Android, you're probably going to have to go through something like a VPN unless you need to root things. Yeah, that's exactly right. So on Firefox, it'll be a you know pretty straightforward extension of what Mr. Gorehill or Gorehill uh, did uh, with his open source uh, code on uBlock Origin, and it's great work he did. Right. Uh, and then we're leveraging off of it. Um, but uh, on, the, on Android, you're right, because... Uh, Google doesn't really play, Google Play, quote unquote, doesn't play the same way that uh, uh, iOS does with the App Store. We're going to have to do some kind of VPN kind of service that lets you not only get at the, the mobile browsing, but also in-app kind of stuff. Now, are you going to be uh, trying to piggyback off something that's already existing, like, for example, AdClear, or are you going to have to develop the whole thing in-house? Yeah, that's a decision we're, we're, we're grappling with right now. Uh -huh. uh, we're looking at some of the open source capabilities that are out there. What, what level of detail do we want? We, I think we got really fortunate in finding uBlock Origin. Mm -hmm. And if we found something that was open source that was that level of quality and better than what was out there, I think, I think we'd probably go that route. But uh, we, we'll, we're still sort of in the decision-making process there. All right. Uh, do we have any sort of a idea of a time frame on when those, those options are going to be available? Or are we still too early in the planning stages for that? Uh, I, I, I think it depends on, again, whether we piggyback, but I, I'd say it's probably towards the, the last quarter or certainly the back half of this year. Okay. Cause I'm, I, I tell you, I'm looking forward to, to putting it on my Android device as well. I, as I said, I use Chrome and I've been using the extension. It works beautifully. Yeah. Great. Uh, I think we'll be, we'll be out with Firefox sh yeah, sooner really, than that. Surely. And then we'll okay. go to the Microsoft Edge too. Yeah. I was going to ask you, you said you heard about it. Yeah, what, where did you hear about it? I'm very curious. Uh, I saw it on the new screen, screensavers on the uh, Twit network. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been How a big fan of Leela Ports for years. So. <laughs> did you see that a while ago or, or just recently on like a rerun kind of when you went for yourself? I saw it on the day it aired and I've just been, uh, we've been trying to get this uh, Wired Wednesday feature of our podcast going and I thought it'd be a great thing to highlight. Yeah, because we weren't cool. doing uh, Wired Wednesday every, you know, Wednesday. We were just because we couldn't find stuff. And then we found that and we thought it was a great opportunity because like myself, I've never heard of anything like this. And I, I actually, it was running into a, another question I had. Um, I just wanted to ask if you could be more, uh, get into more of what kind of ads it is. Um, myself, I, I play a lot of video games. I watch a lot of YouTube, a lot of Twitch. Um, is there, uh, does this work for video ads? or Twitch ads on Twitch TV or anything, or if not, is there plans for this in the future? Yeah, well, so it, 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 it's, it's, you know, if you know the, the uBlock origin code, you probably know it pretty well. So it's, it's really looking for any third party ad server. Uh, so it, if it's being served by a third party, uh, and a lot of video ads are mm -hmm. uh, through TubeMobile and others, then we absolutely do block them. Okay. Um, and uh, we block them pretty aggressively, I think. If you do a side-by-side -side comparison with the top two or three ad blockers, you'll see, because 
they do as well that you they uh, they'll they'll highlight the number of elements that have been blocked, and so we we block you know substantially more elements than they do. So we do we do a really really good job there. Well, I I, I think what my uh, partner here means is uh, you know we, we're YouTube uh, content creators, and uh, obviously we monetize with ads. Uh, yeah. Is is our data sharing any of that uh, profit that's being made with the content creators, or how is that going to work exactly? Oh, that's a great question. Well, actually, and this this brings us to our latest yeah. um, model in our business is that we've been partnering with publishers to promote us, actually, because um, you know we actually view ourselves as an ad enabler, right? To a certain right, we just want people to have the choice to either block ads or unblock and get paid for it. Um, but in a perfect world, we see it becoming kind of a marketplace where enough people say, yeah, you know what, it's worth it to me to unblock the ads and get paid for it. And that allows the data and attention and ads to flow, which helps the publishers. Because right now, the data platforms are making a ton of money, and the publishers are getting really squeezed. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of the online publishers are struggling. And smaller outlets such as yourself and bloggers who really rely on ads to to have an income are kind of getting squeezed by this war between consumers and the large data platforms. So right. we see us as kind of restoring balance in this in the in this ecosystem. So we have started public partnering with some publishers to promote us. And basically what happens is if you go to their sites with an ad blocker, you, they surface a message that says like, hey, you know, your ad blocker is making money off of you. Do you want to do you want to get paid instead? Um, and I'm sure you guys have had this experience where you go to certain ads and they say, oh, we see you're using an ad blocker. And they say, turn it off or pay us or all Absolutely, these things yeah. uh -huh. that kind of put you in, in uh, an adversarial position with your users. Mm -hmm. And we see us as a way for publishers and content creators to put themselves on the side of the users. All right, so, and, so us as a publisher or as a content creator, we'd be able to sign on with you and say, okay, well, we'd like to uh, promote you with a message of some kind, and then, then yeah. we would uh, help each other out is basically what it boils down to. Absolutely, Absolutely. and then what, okay. we've, what we've said to publishers is if, if, you, if you promote us and then someone signs up through you, then that person gets whitelisted. And we tell our users, like, look, the publisher that brought you to our data is going to be whitelisted on you for you forever. Mm -hmm. um, and then once the companies start paying, you know, all the ads will get through. But if you, if you choose that, all the, paid ads. all the paid ads will get through if you choose that. Um, but in the meantime, until we get to that stage, the publishers that are promoting us can have you whitelisted. All right. That, that's an excellent way of doing things. Cause I mean, we don't, nobody wants to see content creators completely lose out either. No, no absolutely right. not. No, absolutely we, not. We agree. We, we actually have a little, if you've been to our site, we have a little, uh, like a scales thing. And we, and, and we show kind of the balance that existed before the internet where consumers, as you described, created their attention for content. Mm -hmm. uh, and then beginning with the internet with IP based solutions, um, you started collecting all this data, which we now know is worth hundreds of billions. And that was kind of a freebie for the ad ecosystem or the publisher ecosystem, but the ones who benefited with the platforms. And, and things kind of got out of balance because I was getting the ads and I was getting scraped for data and I had the same content as before. And then you entered ad blocking about five years ago um, and all of a sudden uh, the uh, user could get the content for nothing not for data or attention, and we don't feel that's fair. We agree with you. That's not fair to the publishing industry. So we're looking to restore some balance. And so we think if you look at the scales, you trade your attention and your data for content and cash. And the cash comes from the data platforms. And it's really funny. Even when we talk to these data platforms, they use the analogy of the music industry where file sharing is kind of the equivalent of ad blocking that came about and you could bury your head in the sand and say, let's just hope it goes back or you can play ball. And that's kind of what iTunes and others, Pandora's and the, the world have done Spotify's. And we think our solution is, is that, is that outcome where hey, the publishers can win the data platforms they made a tacit admission as much as they call Adblock plus the mafia, and I tend to agree with the characterization. 
Yeah, I but agree with make, that wholeheartedly. Like, uh, that they they'd rather pay and get you know ten cent ten dollars back for every dollar they pay. There's an article from three and a half years ago that they, uh, by paying out of plus, had uh, saved an estimated almost nine hundred million dollars. That was three years ago. I think the numbers in the billions now. So they're making so much hay. It's only fair they they share it, but it shouldn't stop at the ad blocking company. It should go to the users. Yeah. And that's why I'm glad you guys are, uh, we had this discussion about community and getting more into it. Like, it seems like you guys are basically internet superheroes and you're just trying to <laughs> protect the, or internet oh, Jedis. It's my, my down vest. Yeah, internet <laughs> Jedis maybe or something like that. But I, I really like that. I think that's going to be a really good strong point to, you know, make your company shine and stick out more. I really like that. Now, now how close are you to uh, securing some deals with some of these ad firms? Because I know personally I haven't seen hardly anything in the way of ads come through yet. Yeah, no, uh, we've, we've had the discussions with folks and, you know, realistically, I mean, I, we believe in one of our core values is radical honesty. And, and we're, we, we would, we would think somewhere in the low to mid six figures of uh, users or members is where we, we cross a tipping point. Um, but it, it's really a kind of a slow grind right now. We're approaching really close to 10,000, but we're a ways away from where we need to be. Re, just being re, uh, you know, being honest, but that's why we're talking to folks like you. So, cause we really feel like if the community comes together and we help each other, we end up helping ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's what we really need. We need this sort of community groundswell to get going, whether it's through a publisher channel, folks like yourselves who are interested in, in our mission, um, and just, you know, our SEO and other techniques to, to market our site. Great. Good. Well, I mean, uh, for any of our listeners who are interested, uh, make sure you check out ourdata.us, which is their website. And uh, even if you're not interested in downloading right now, I'd recommend getting in while you can and signing up because uh, you, the earlier you're signing up, the more shares you're going to get. Right. That's exactly right. There is a first mover advantage for publishers and for consumers. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah, that's a good point. So the, the whole idea behind the shares kind of started when we were – trying to figure out how to reward people. You know, how do, how do we pay people? How do you um, value each individual person's data? And we talked about this really thoughtfully because we thought, you know, how can we say this woman's data is more or less valuable than this man's data? And that felt complicated and tricky. And so we said, okay, it's just really simple. What are the two things that people can do to help us grow our our company and therefore grow the value and it was number one signing up early and number two sharing the idea with other people and so we just said okay we're not going to pay people for their um, behavior at all we're just going to give out the shares based on how soon you join mm -hmm. and then every time you share our data with someone else using a referral code you get bonus shares and they also get bonus shares and we thought that that was sort of the fairest way of doing it. I right. Like it. I like it. I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, at first glance, sounds a little pyramid schemey, but I completely understand the, the structure. Yeah. Uh, it de definitely well, enables yeah. enables you to spread the word more and help everybody out. Yeah, and, you know, it's like, it's like Uber has the give a code, get a code, you know, give yeah. a referral, you get a referral. A lot of companies these days are starting to Airbnb, Lyft, right. Uber, um, Lots and, of you know, companies are doing it. You share your referral code, you get twenty five dollars, and the person that signs up gets twenty five dollars. It's sort of the the new the new way of of growing. Mm -hmm. Right, and yeah, uh, this is clear too, one hundred percent that you only get referral bonuses at the first level, like these other guys. You don't like go down two or three, or it's not like a multi level marketing yeah. uh, kind of thing. So it's not. I know, I know people look at it and say, oh. This is a pyramid, and, and it really is. It's only one level of the people you touch and that you that are touched. And you're not taking any shares from anyone else yeah. either. Right, right. So, I mean, it's definitely, it doesn't sound at all shady by any stretch of the imagination. I want to be clear about that. It's just a good way to explain it quickly. Yeah, because I also saw in your frequent asked questions, you talked about that. You're like, you know, it's not really, you had to explain that a little bit. And it does make sense once you talk, because like yeah. you said, it's just one level. It's not... No one's stealing anything. <laughs> right. It's a good way to help your friends out, get a little bit more, and you get a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, and it incentivizes people to kind of, you know, we 
it's it's it incentivizes people to share something that, that they enjoy with the people that they care about too. Mm-hmm. Which is why we're here today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have one more question for you guys, and then uh, we can let you all get back to your back to your day in uh, promoting this fantastic service. But uh, right now, a lot of uh, a lot of concern is being placed on privacy. Uh, the reason I bring that up is because obviously you're da- collecting data in order to sell it and compensate you for the data you're using. But I'm just wondering how uh, that data data is being handled. For example, is somebody who's sitting in the office there going to be able to look up Casey's browser history? Because trust me, you don't want to see that. I don't want them knowing I still listen to Br- Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. We actually don't collect any browsing history we don't we don't mean to collect and store any of your data okay beyond we need to pay you so we have your you know email address password and referral code that that kind of stuff mm-hmm. um but, but that's and we don't actually even ask you for any of your uh, payment information or anything at this stage we are really more of a gatekeeper okay so we're not so if somebody were to hack into our data servers, they're not going to find anything of any real value. There's no data to get. No, no there's nothing. No, there's we're, nothing we're, there. uh, we're, we're thinking about just, we're, we like to think of ourselves as a consumer data union. Okay. So, so like labor unions were a response to industrial monopolies. We're a consumer data union as a response to these data monopolies. And so we are really your union rep. Okay. Uh, that doesn't always have great connotations. Maybe in Pittsburgh, it has a better one than some of the, the coasts. But um, I, that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to be your representative, the community's representative, cut the best deal possible. And the bigger the community, by definition, the more leverage and negotiating power we have and getting the best deal for our members. But we're not actually capturing or we never intend to really capture. Because you, you raise a great point. You would need world-class security experts and infrastructure to protect it. Mm -hmm. And that wheel's already been created or being created. We don't need to recreate it from what Google and Facebook have done. We just need to be your your policeman, your go in and say, hey, valuable, uh, that's okay. Our our member has agreed, check, check the box, to trade their compensation monetary compensation mm-hmm. here's a deal we feel is, is fair and then by the way any consumer can make that choice too they say that isn't fair i'm going to continue to block or that is fair i'll accept the cash in response in return for the exchange of data and attention okay so you're serving more of a negotiator role than an actual storage facility that's right the other the other important point is that we don't sell them we don't sell any data yeah. Yeah. We're, not, we're not aiming to make money off of anybody's yeah. data yeah, well, we don't have anything to sell. So. Yeah, <laughs> if, if we did, then we're, we're, that's not yeah. that's not the deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, how how do you folks get paid? Then is it just a matter of negotiating with the companies that are collecting the data? That's right, and then we'll we'll pay ninety percent out, and we'll keep ten percent. Yeah, we get ten percent. Which goes back to the whole benefit corporation thing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. It's a minimum of ninety percent will go to the uh, to the users. Awesome. On a per share awesome. basis. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you want to add? Yeah, just uh, to, to tell your viewers and, and your, your supporters to, to jump on our data, uh, get the iOS, get Chrome, like we said, Firefox soon, and, and join and share, uh, share with your friends, your family. The, the only way this is going to be effective is if we get a critical mass of users. So we're asking... Uh, for everyone's help in getting that done awesome. so we can help the group. Awesome. Yeah, and to that, to that point, I would say that you can also create accounts for everyone. Every member of your family right. can have their own account. So if you've got kids, you can create accounts for them. We don't have age limits. There's only one account per person, but anyone can have an account. So okay. it just it just requires an email and password. So it behooves, you know, if you've got every member of your family should have an account for this. It means I have to create one for my mom and she hates technology. <laughs> and the invisible person who doesn't live with you. <laughs> well, uh, well, the good thing about our data is it just runs in the background. I mean, it's it's fairly, it's, it's idiot proof, right? You can set it up for her on Chrome and all of a sudden she'll have this incredible experience yeah. without having to do anything. It's it's kind of a nice Mother's Day gift. <laughs> all right, all right, so good. Yeah. 
I just bought my mom a new cell phone for Christmas and sent it up for her. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun being the only technical one in the family. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll let you guys uh, get back to whatever you have to do for the day. And uh, we'll make sure we link to all the applicable links in the video description below. Give you a link to our data.us and I'll uh, throw in my referral code in there too. <laughs> if you uh, choose to do it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. I, yeah. I thought this was really cool. Thanks again. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all we have for today. All right, we'll see you all next week on Wired Wednesday. Have a good one. Right. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yep, see ya. Thanks for joining us.